I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering and data analytics. In this episode, we return to our Python on Snowflake playlist, and we're going to take a look at execute string, which is very similar to execute stream that we covered in a previous episode, whereas execute stream allowed you to pull a bunch of SQL statements from a file, execute string will allow you to have that string already in memory with a whole bunch of uh, SQL statements in it and allow those to execute uh, one by one. And so without further ado, let's get to our execute string on Python for Snowflake. Okay, so what I've got here is uh, I'm just gonna make a new file in the idle shell here. This is a default installation of Python plus some goodies uh, in there and uh, including the uh, the uh, Snowflake connector which make sure you uh, get the Snowflake connector with the pandas uh, um, option on it um, which you can see we installed in previous episodes. It's got pandas and square brackets at the end of the pip install statement so make sure you get that one. And uh, we're going to first we'll uh, import our Snowflake connector and we'll import pandas and then I'll give some feedback to the user and say opening database and then I'll create my connection. Uh, connection is equal to Snowflake connector to connect and I'll paste in a, a connection string I had from a previous episode and uh, um, you can see it there. I've got uh, um, my warehouse and database and my schema um, selected and that's a nice way of doing your connection so that you know exactly where you're you're going when you get there um, you can you know go in without those and you know you can do your use statements to change your context but it's a little more a little bit more involved this is a little bit easier way of connecting uh, so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to say that my uh, my cs list or my cursor list is equal to uh, cnn.execute string and that's the the string that we've been talking about um, that we want to execute against our database that has more than one statement and it could have a whole bunch of statements in it and um, so we have a project tasks uh, table in our database and we also have a project comments database and so I'll just do some kind of um, just random statement here. I'll select star from tasks where the task ID is less than seven and I'll select star from the project comments uh, where uh, and I'll just take everything from there. I think there's only a few lines in that table and uh, and then you can see we've got our two SQL statements and they're uh, separated by the semicolon and so that makes our execute string uh, which is go going to be um, uh, that'll be very useful because we could make a whole bunch of statements if we wanted to and we can execute those uh, as we as we like and so uh, what we'll do is uh, we can go in and we can say for you know CS that's a for each cursor in the CS list because it returns a uh, cursor for each one uh, we'll we'll take a look at that and then for each row in the cursor um, we'll our cursor result will will print that row. That'll be an easy way of, of doing this here just to show you um, how this can work. And so first thing we'll make or next thing we'll make sure is that we close our database connection uh, so we don't leave that open and uh, uh, we can sort of take a look at that, put a little more feedback in so that we know at each stage of what's happening here. So I'll, I'll print uh, selecting data um, so that we know the step when that steps happening and then I'll do the uh, the cursor through um, uh, like the cursor result here so I'll just say you know here's the data and um, and uh, we can put those in and then uh, and then we can hit F5 and just see what we get make sure I don't have any errors in there and it looks pretty good so far so uh, so I can go ahead and um, I'll put a closing database in there as well and then maybe a, a done statement at the end just so we know that everything happened as we would like it to. We didn't put this in the try catch block um, so we don't really have any error handling there so this will sort of help us uh, take a look at that. So 
hit F5, and uh, this is the first statement that'll run. That's the second statement that'll run, and uh, we're hoping to get the uh, the results from that. So here we go, and uh, there we go. F5. It's opening uh, Snowflake, and that was actually pretty fast. So it says here's the data. Um, there's our first row uh, from the first table. It has three columns in it, and that one's the second row from the first uh, result set. So you can see this one, two, three, one, two, three. There's three columns in that table. And then in the next table, it got five, five rows, and uh, there's two columns in that table. And so um, that is how you can use execute string on your Snowflake database with Python. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to use execute string uh, in our Python on Snowflake series. If you like what you saw today, please make sure to give the video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet and make sure to click the bell when you see the bell so that you'll be notified of any new content I put up. If you have any questions or comments about what you saw today, make sure to put those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer any questions you might have. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.